Kids. Welcome to SFHS Today. I'm Mark. And I'm Austin. As it is December and temperatures are dropping, cold and flu season is upon us. Rain and I also found out that there has been an increase in cases of strep throat. We spoke with the school nurse, Holly Coy, and with HOSA advisor and teacher, Kathy Wyland, to get some tips and information about these issues. It is the season to be jolly, but it's also tis the season to be sick. This is a time of year when there is a virus happening. Um, the flu, the flu virus. There are actually three types of the flu virus. Uh, there is a type A, B, and C. And the annual epidemic that we have at this time of year all the time is the one that is the A and B. And it's something that affects our lungs, it affects our throat, it affects our nose, and it's something that you have high fever with. I'm Holly Coy, I'm the school nurse here at the high school. And we have a really busy season coming up with illness. Um, it's the flu season and also lots of colds and lots of other illnesses. Um, so influenza can cause serious illness um, or mild illness and it depends on which strain you have. So if you have a temperature of more than 100 degrees, you're supposed to stay home for 24 hours after your temperature returns to normal. If you're having any vomiting or diarrhea, you need to stay home. If you develop a rash and you're not sure what is causing the rash, that would be another reason. The vaccination that we have this year has, is a certain virus vaccination, which means that um, if you, you will not get that one that's in the vaccination, but there's also different kinds of viruses that you can still get. So just because you get a flu shot doesn't mean that, um, that you're not going to get the virus because there's other influenza viruses that are happening in your body. Ways to prevent yourself from getting sick or others around you, make sure you wash your hands really well, um, cover your cough, uh, if you are sick, again, stay home so you're not spreading it to others. Uh, make sure you eat a really healthy, um, well-balanced diet. So that the CDC conducts these studies every year, and um, they're saying this year about 40% among the general population are going to, it's going to reduce their risk if they do get the vaccination. Um, if you have any concerns about having strep throat, we request that you stay home until you know for sure if you have strep throat or not. And usually that's done um, by going to the doctor and having a throat culture done. If you're diagnosed with strep throat, you need to stay home for 24 hours after you've started the antibiotics. Attention seniors, senior superlatives must be in by December 9th. Also, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, the system for class registration has changed. Here's Katie and Devin with more information. How do you register for classes? You would go down to a computer lab um, that's been assigned by the counseling department with your Saints time teacher. Um, you can start registering now, but I would wait until the presentation in the computer lab, and then you can go all the way until January 6th for the first window. There's a second window that opens, and that's to confirm that you want the 15 classes that you registered for um, for the next year, and then you can put in alternative classes during the second window time. So the first window is up until January 6th. And the second window goes until, it's the third week in January from the 23rd until the 27th. Yeah, there's a couple of new classes, so you'll have to ask your academic time teacher or the counselor that you're with. A couple of them, um, I believe forensic science, astronomy, um, just different AP biology I think is new, um, just off the top of my head. The most challenging classes um, are the ones that look the best um, that you can still do well in. So like if you take AP classes or college classes in the schools, that tends to look really well or really good on your application because the colleges can see that students are working hard to take the most challenging curriculum so that they can do well. So just make sure to get your registration done by January 6th. Last Saturday, SFHS hosted an Indigenous Peoples Day. The celebration of Indigenous people was an event to honor and learn about Native American culture. About 100 people attended the event and had the opportunity to make dream catchers, corn husk dolls, learn beading, color shoulder bags, see and learn about Native dancing and to regalia. There was also a portable planetarium where Dakota and Ojibwe storytellers talked about the stars. Many students are very involved here at SFHS, juggling things such as sports, activities, schoolwork, and an active social life. While many of us are only able to manage a few of these things, one student seems to have mastered the ability to find time for everything she does, and to do well with all of them. Let's go to Chi Vu, who talked to Elizabeth Vang, this week's Five Minutes of Fame. Students, celebrities everywhere, this is why you should care about Five Minutes of Fame. The activities that I am involved in are speech, student council, trio, youth group, Asian club, 
show choir, bel canto, theater, and I was in debate. Uh, I know Elizabeth uh, a couple of ways. Number one, I had her in class last trimester in my sophomore English class, and she's also a member of our debate team. And uh, I find Elizabeth to be bright, friendly, always smiling, always on the go. Whether it's class or activities, she's just running from one place to the other, and somehow she manages to do it all. I think the fact that she came in to debate with a positive attitude, uh, she works hard like she does in everything else, uh, it really complimented her and the success she had in her program. Uh, her record was, was very good for a beginning debater this year and we're really proud to have had her on our team. Well, I'm usually at school for about, I want to say 10 to 11 hours a day, almost like five days a week, yeah. Some of my notable advisors are Ms. Cascaden, she is the advisor for Student Council, and Ms. Arnold, who is the head coach for speech. Well, I got to know Elizabeth in a couple different ways. I had her last year in class, and uh, last year and this year I've gotten to work with her with Student Council. She has been, um, a, she's a natural leader, and she's eager to find ways to use her talents to um, work with other people and better the school. Last year she volunteered to be the chairperson, which is like the leader, the coordinator for the winter dance, which went very, very well. She um, expressed interest and became our, one of our student representatives on the site management council and fills in from time to time as a student representative on the school board as well. So she's eager to get involved. She's uh, very verbal, very articulate. Um, is comfortable with her own views and expressing them and is very willing to listen to other people's. She's just a joy. She's, um, she's effervescent and very dependable and uh, very thorough, which is very cool because that comes in handy in everything you ever do in life. Elizabeth is, uh, I met her through speech for last year. I was a new coach. She came in all excited. Um, and was passionate about, about everything speech and wanted to do well. She wanted to practice two or three times a week. She was my only speech student who actually did two different, um, two different categories, uh, both original oration and prose. So this year, she is, um, she's taking more of a leadership position. She's helping with the other students. She is, um, she wants to try more than pro. She wants to try different categories. So that's exciting for me. She has an enthusiasm. She has a passion. She wants to do it all. Um, and it's just fun every time she comes in. I would say speech has impacted me the most because I started, I started it in eighth grade. And from there on, my technique of using my articulatory tools have grown. I manage by having a planner, see? I have a planner and I usually write down what my schedule for the day is or what my schedule for the week is and from there on I just kind of check off the things that I've done. And so I know what's coming next and yeah, I just have a, a good plan for the week and I just, I know what's ahead. Earlier this week, the Magical Choir went to Elam Baptist Church in Anoko where they sang for a senior citizen luncheon. Let's go to reporter Brittany Sitch, who has more information. The Manual Singers uh, sang at uh, Elam Baptist Church in Anoka, and it's a tradition that we've had now for seven years. The former choir director here, Lee Carlson, he was uh, the choir director here for 34 years, retired in 1998, invited us after I got the job the first year, and uh, they used to rotate, they used to rotate amongst the choirs sort of in the area. Um, but now we, we're, we're just the go-to, so for the last seven years we've sung, and we sing for their um, annual monthly uh, senior Christmas luncheon, um, and we get to we get to sing a concert for about 45 minutes, and then afterwards they feed us, and we get to uh, visit and and have some some time to visit with with people who are in attendance and get to know them and get to know their stories, and um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of a lot of good togetherness to sort of start the holiday season. This part of singing at the church was it was very personal. Uh, it was very very intimate place, there was a small stage, and um, we were all very, very close to the, uh, the people in the audience, and then later we were able to eat with them, and so we really got to know them, and overall it was really just nice to uh, get to know the audience that you performed with. You don't often get to do that, and so 
That was my favorite part about it. Um, my favorite part was after our performance, when we got to mingle with the old folks, they were really nice, super sweet, and I also loved watching the reaction to us singing. Hey Marty, did you know that we have a, a clothing designer here at SFHS? Yes, I did, Austin. Let's go to Alyssa, who put the senior spotlight on clothing designer Colin Jaworski. Has this always been a dream of yours? Um, no, not really. Um, so I was hanging out at my buddy's house over the summer, and we started thinking about like how cool it would be to make our own clothing company. And eventually after that, we lost interest. Um, but then I kind of got the interest sparked back into me a couple months ago, and that's... Um, it probably took about a month to get from the point where I started working on it to the point where the website was live and public. Uh, right now I am designing with uh, Tony Ficasello and Jake Buchanan and they're really great guys to work with. Tony is the one I started the whole like idea with so he's been there the whole time and I don't plan on having him leave soon. And I actually sat with Jake at lunch last trimester so um, it just pretty worked out pretty well for that. A typical design takes anywhere from one day to a week to finish. Some are a lot easier than others. Um, the most popular shirts would have to be the Minnesota sweatshirt and the um, it's a mixture of colors on a sweatshirt. It's called Intense. Uh, the best thing is probably interacting with people, getting a lot of feedback. Um, even like if it's negative, like I'll still like think about it and take that in consideration. Uh, I hope to make some money and have a lot of fun doing it. The school's theater department is putting on Antigone for the competitive Winter One Act. Auditions were held on Monday. Reporters Tyler and Walker found out some more information. Well, I actually had a few scripts in mind, and um, then I had some students come together and look at the, a couple, and they really enjoyed Antigone. Um, I like it because it is timeless. Um, it's talk about educational, it's the basis of all drama. Um, so the fact that we have this Greek uh, tragedy that has survived time, um, but it can really be updated to be modern. And so we're going to have a lot of fun playing with, um, with the themes in it and trying to maybe modernize it a little bit. I was in the one act last year and the one act the year before that. I was in the one act my freshman and sophomore year. I was in the one act my freshman and sophomore year. No. <laughs> I have never been in the one act. I have been in two. This will be my third one act. This is my first one act. Have I ever been in one act before? No. I plan to audition for Creon or Hoplon. I'm doing my job, Amen. A king has to make tough decisions. He can't think of himself. Uh, either Haman or Creon. Uh, Antigone or Ismini. Antigone. I have done tech. Um, I think I'm coming up on my 20th show of doing tech. I have done tech, but not as nearly as many as her. I see it. How wonderful for you. You're so much stronger and you're bright than I am. I see it. What I find with one at competition, it's actually frustrating because I I don't really like the idea of competitive theater. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me because really theater is a supportive art form and the fact that we go and compete against other schools, it's not quite like being able to compete with a sport because everything is different. It, it would be like um, putting a football team and a basketball team in the same place and saying, who wins? Um, because you might have a tragedy, and you might have a comedy, and you might have something that's somewhere in between. Um, you might have an absurd play. So you're doing all these different kinds of plays, um, and then somebody's going to judge which one was executed the best, which one. Um, it's just is really funny, because how do, you, how do you judge this comedy against this tragedy? So the thing that I like about one act is not the competition. Um, because that, to me, is sort of um, false. I, d I don't think you can really compare apples and oranges like that. Uh, um, for tech, they're really busy for our competitions because we only have about 10 minutes to set up. 
and we only end more timed because if we go over a certain time limit for our show, we are disqualified. So it's pretty busy for us. Um, and really, we get to go see a huge variety of plays. And so when we're not performing, we're watching other people. And that is where I think my students can learn, they can become informed and um, see all kinds of different theater and also meet a lot of different students who also enjoy doing the same things that they do. That's all this week, Saints. Stay tuned for weather and sports. Hey Saints, I'm Connor and this is weather. Today it's going to be cloudy with a high 18 and a low of 5. Tomorrow, it's going to be snowing with a high of 18 and a low of 10. Sunday, it's going to be cloudy with a high of 19 and a low of 12. Have a good weekend, Saints. Hey, Saints. Welcome to sports. I'm Misty. And I'm Rianne. Last Saturday, wrestling took first place at the Hastings Tournament and had a match on Thursday night at home against Chisago Lakes. They recently made the Star Tribune's top team to watch with five wrestlers ranked among the top five in their respective weight classes. Walker put together a highlight reel of Saturday's tournament. <laughs> Hockey has a game tomorrow at home against West Patonka at 3. Boys Hockey played Tuesday and came out with a win of 13 to 1 against Cambridge. They also played last night against Rogers and scores can be found online. And that brings us to our athlete of the week, Reese Kaler. Reese is a junior on our hockey team this year. It's his third year in the program. Um, last year he led our team in scoring with 27 goals. He's off to a good start again this year. Um, off the ice, he's a great kid as well, so he's, he's a big part of our program. Uh, I was confident, and our, our team needed a W, and I just worked my hardest to score a goal. So that was against Shakopee. That was our home opener and season opener. Uh, we ended up winning 4-3 to three in overtime. Um, it was about halfway through overtime, and they had a two-on-one uh, going down the right side of the rink, and uh, the defender took the... the other teammate that Reese had with him, and Reese walked in and shot up her corner for the game winner. Um, I don't know. I kind of just want to go to college, but I'll see what I what I got to work with. Uh, the thing I value most is that I can trust them um, as a group overall, from top to bottom. Um, I feel like we have a, a tight knit group of guys, and our leadership that we have. Uh, we have a lot of veteran players and. Uh, they're very open and honest, and we can have uh, some quality dialogue and uh, setting up the, the team atmosphere and moving forward, it'll help us greatly. We're hoping for a quarterfinal win in sections and to get at least 16 wins this year. Um, we actually, we play Thursday night against Rogers, and then our, our game on Saturday is against Moundsview, uh, and then Next Tuesday, we'll travel up to Duluth Marshall um, for an away game up in Duluth. Girls basketball will have a game tonight against St. Paul Central at 7:15. Boys basketball had their first game on Tuesday and walked away with the win of 60 to 51. They have another game on Saturday against St. Louis Park at Anoka Ramsey Community College at 4. Gymnastics had their first meet on Wednesday against Rogers at, at home at 6:30 and they won 134 to 133. Winter Dance has a competition on Saturday at Lakeville North, and next Tuesday they compete at North Branch. That's all we have for you this week, Saints.